But I think the coolest thing about um, this video was actually that we were able to um, kill two non-PC memes with one social justice warrior. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, Sway come back to another video. That slide was smooth as frick. Engineering clock. From this point onwards only available for one more month. Once they are gone, they are gone. Link in the info box, description, etc. Also the snack merch is finally available. I can't wait for my snack merch to arrive because it's the cutest and the most adorable thing ever. It turned out so nicely. Also arithmetic merch. Never mind. We are going to talk about the most useless identity you are never ever going to use in your life once again after seeing it here on this channel. But we are going to cover it anyways just because I had it lying around for like one and a half years by now on my plant list. We are finally going to do it and the answer is pretty surprising. It allows for a really nice answer. It's, it's, it's really surprising that we can kind of superimpose sine waves and take the reciprocal with some superimposed cosine waves and still arrive at some really nice solution. Yeah, we are going to dive right in. At first I want you guys to notice something, namely that the sine and the cosine are respectively just the imaginary part of the complex exponential function and the real part of the complex exponential function. You can sum up different real parts and this is just the real part of the whole sum. Okay, it's, it's a linear real operator, our real and imaginary parts. So what we are going to arrive at at first at, as the first observation is that this right here in the numerator is just the imaginary part of, okay, this is just our sum where our k is bounded between 1 and n of, okay, sine of 2k in exponential form is nothing but e to the i 2k, okay, I hope you can see where this came from, over and the same thing with the real part as the cosine. So the real part of the sum being bounded between 1 and n of e to the i 2k. So our job for now is to just evaluate well what the sum is going to be right here because we are having the sum in both the numerator and denominator and if we can find a nice expression for this type of summation, final summation, then we are basically already done. And there's actually something that works out really nicely because if we take a look, this is just a geometric series. Um, or the geometric progression, I should rather say. So we don't need to look for convergence or anything. We are just going to take a look at the geometric progression for now. Namely, if we have a sum bounded between 1 and n of x to the kth power. So if we have our summation from 0 to n, then this would be the geometric progression, namely 1 minus x to the nth power in this case, n plus 1th power over 1 minus x. But now we have the thing that our geometric progression right here only starts at 1, meaning we need the zeroth term. Zeroth term is, well, x to the zeroth power, which is going to give us 1 exactly. So what we need to do is we need to add zero apples to this whole thing to make a geometric series out of it. Namely, we are going to add 1 and subtract 1. This is something we can do, okay? If I don't place any apples to your bunch of apples, then, well, it's just your bunch of apples, right? And this thing right here is exactly our geometric progression that we are having, minus 1. I hope you could follow everything I did here, it's pretty easy. Now we are just going to bring those two um, fractions together basically. We are going to expand the negative 1 by 1 minus x over 1 minus x, leaving us with a common denominator of 1 minus x. And also up here we are going to have, okay, negative 1 plus x. We are going to turn the signs around, plus 1 minus x to the n plus 1th power. As you might notice, the negative 1 and the 1 is going to cancel out. We are going to have x as a common factor here in the first place. So this is x times. And then we are going to have 1 minus x to the nth power over 1 minus x. We can expand this fraction by negative 1 over negative 1. Okay, just really elementary operations we are doing here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at Papa Flemmy 2. We are covering a lot of basic mathematics there with a little sprinkle of rigorousness. So yeah. Take a look at that, link is always down there in the description. Then we are going to have x to the nth power minus 1 over x minus 1. All right, this is what we are having now. And what is our x exactly? Well, our x is nothing but e to the 2i in our case, because we can use exponentiation rules 
to bring the k to the outside, basically exponentiating an exponential. And this is just e to the 2i to the kth power, meaning our x is e to the 2i. And we are going to plug it in and see what we are going to get. The meaning we are going to have, okay, e to the 2i and then e to the 2in minus 1 over e to the 2i minus 1. Hmm. When I first evaluated this thing, um, I got stuck at this point because um, it didn't really lead to anywhere once taking a look at that. But there's actually something we can do. We need to take a look at the sign of n for this. This kind of falls out from the sky just because it's something that you don't really see immediately as a substitution. But if you work around a tiny little bit, you are going to see that this is the best substitution possible. We are going to take a look at the sign of n. But this thing in its Euler form, meaning this is going to evaluate to something over 2i. What is the something going to be? Well, e to the i n minus e to the negative i n. Okay, now we are going to multiply both sides by 2i. It's not equal to 0 by the definition of i and 2 being the successor of 1. Meaning this cancels out. We are going to be left with 2i times the sine of n being equal to e to the i n minus e to the negative i n. And now let us take a look at what we have here. What we are seeking is for example e to the 2 i n minus 1. Uh, this is kind of fancy, right? Because um, if we were to factor out the e to the negative i n on this whole subtraction here, we are going to get e to the negative i n times parentheses e to the 2 i n minus 1. This is genius, right? So we are going to factor stuff out. So 2 i times the sine of n is thus equal to e to the negative i n times e to the 2 i n minus 1. And this is exactly what we need. This is great. Now we can just uh, multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of e to the negative i n, namely e to the i n, it's never equal to zero, okay? Leaving us with e to the i n times 2i times the sine of n being equal to e to the 2 i n minus 1. And n obviously in our case is just going to be, well, a natural number in some way, all right? Just because our natural number is the upper bound here. It's just the sine of n. Now we can plug this into here. So um, now we are going to get uh, e to the 2i times, okay, what we have up here in the denominator is exactly this, e to the i n times 2i times the sine of n. And all of this over e to the 2i minus 1. Now we are stuck yet again. What is e to the 2i minus 1? Well, something pretty dope, actually. What happens if we plug in um, n being equal to 1? Then we are going to get e to the i times 2i times the sine of 1 being equal to e to the 2i minus 1. Oh goodness, this is exactly what we need. Now, we are going to let n go to 1 here in our case, leaving us with e to the i, 2 times i, oh this is great, times the sine of 1. And you might notice that 2i over 2i is going to cancel out e to the 2i over e to the i is just going to be e to the i and then times e to the i n is going to be e to the i times n plus 1. We are just going to um, use the function equation for the exponential function here times the sine of n over the sine of 1. And we are going to call this piece of shit right here just, I don't know, um, a, okay. Uh, yeah, let's give it a real fancy name, just A. <laughs> so this thing right here is A. And now, e to the i n plus 1 is Euler's formula. Wheeler's formula, Reloy's identity, no, Reloy's formula is going to give us, okay, we are going to have A times the cosine of n plus 1. And I'm going to link a bunch of videos down there in the description because I'm using a lot of stuff here that we have derived before on this channel. So if you don't know about anything right here that we are doing, just take a look at the prerequisite videos basically. Cosine of n plus 1 plus i times the sine of n plus 1. You might notice that the sine of n over the sine of 1, um, even though they are transcendental, I think this quotient should be transcendental for each and every natural n, but you can correct me if I'm wrong here. Maybe Angel Mendes Riviera can uh, comment here a tiny little bit. This thing is a real number, meaning if we have the real or imaginary part of a real number, we can just drag it to the outside as a common factor. It really isn't affected by our real operators that we are having here. Other than that, we can identify the real and imaginary parts on this 
complex function that we are having here. Meaning overall, what we are having here is on the one hand the imaginary part of what we had evaluated here. The imaginary part is a times sine of n plus 1. And on the other hand, our real part is exactly a times the cosine of n plus 1. <laughs> well, our a is going to cancel out, all right? And well, other than that, we are basically done because sine of n plus 1 over cosine of n plus 1 is nothing but tangent it is of n plus 1. And this is freaking great. Um, okay, so. So this superposition of weird sine and cosine waves and the quotient of that evaluated to the tangent of n plus 1. I mean, this is pretty cool as an end result if you ask me, but you are never ever going to use this right here. Computationally, I think this right here sucks balls. So I don't know if you can make use of it. Maybe you can simplify stuff using double angle formulas. I don't know. But I think the coolest thing about um, this video was actually that we were able to um, kill two non-PC memes with one social justice warrior by using this sine of n reformulation right here. I, I think this is the coolest part about the proof that we did here. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, then please like, subscribe, and comment, channel, like if you want to support channel a bit more, buy those teachers I create. New snack merch is amazing and also here you know um, Engineering clock is pretty freaking amazing. Other than that, look on my really, really cursed Instagram and Twitter accounts if you want more math memes. And other than the next video, I wish you guys a blended day. Ciao!